Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Out and About on the Think Tech Streaming Live Network Series. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and delighted you're joining us today where each, well, every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. And I would also like to say this week is a week we celebrate Thanksgiving in the U.S. So as you're uh, watching the show or maybe afterwards, take a moment and write down all the things that you're thankful for in this life. It's easy to grouse about a lot of stuff, but we have so many great things to think about. Uh, you know, start with thinking, sleeping with a great pillow under your head if you got that and work your way up from there. So just a reminder to be grateful and an attitude of gratitude is the way to go. Joining me today in the studio, I am very grateful to have Amber Larson, a transgender activist and fellow human being on the journey to talk about issues that transgender people face and how we can help better understand uh, those issues and that journey and support it along the way. So with that, I'd like to welcome Amber to the show today. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So we uh, met at the Pride Parade, I believe, didn't we? Or uh, The UH Pride event. Is oh, where we met. The UH Pride event. That's yes. right. Oh, yeah. So, Ed, and you were with uh, at, at the. I next... was with Church of the Crossroads. And so. Church of the Crossroads. Right. Okay. So, I'm assuming Church of the Crossroads is a welcoming, uh, open and, and open and affirming and peace at peace church. Yes. Opening mm -hmm. and affirming tr uh, peace church, and that's the church that's uh, the sort of a round church at University in the Freeway. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, what does that mean that a church is? open and affirming or welcoming. Uh, how, well, what's the official? Uh, well, no, okay. open and affirming, welcoming, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, uh, I mean, we don't judge about uh, for anybody with anything. I mean, you know, you're there to to get the grace of God or hear the word or whatever you're there for, uh, you know, come on in. It doesn't matter who you are, uh, what you believe, um, you know, just come on in and, and, and hear what we have to say. We're, we're very, um, very welcoming in the fact that the members um, there will, you know, they greet you with love in their arms and ha eyes, you know. Um, when I first uh, joined the church, well, actually, when I first went to the church, I was very apprehensive, and um, I ended up joining the church like two weeks later mm -hmm. as a member because it just, I just felt so a part of. Yeah, so they're just, they're just like doing what we should all do, which is embracing our fellow humans on the journey. And exactly. with the spirit of aloha. Exactly. So uh, thank you for, for coming in and, and talking about your story and, and maybe sharing this with other people and letting them know uh, it is part of a journey of life. And we're all on a journey of life. And some of us take journeys that seem harder and others uh, seem easier. But it's all part of a journey that I think we can all respect and learn from each other. So tell us about. Um, your journey and how how what what is transgender for you and how did this transition take place for you um, in your life? Well, I mean, for me, it started many years ago when I was uh, maybe five or six years old, and I, and I just kind of came to realize that what I felt inside didn't match what was outside, mm -hmm. um, and this was during the '60s and '70s, which was quite a trying time back then because, it, I mean, the word transgender wasn't even around. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, you know, through my life and dealing with all the, the emotions and, and things that were going through my head, uh, you know, I just came to the realization that, you know, it was time for me to be me. I, w I didn't want to live under what society said I was supposed to be or who I was supposed to be. Um, and I, I mean, I guess that's just, you know, getting older and understanding what's, what you want out of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a nice thing about being a little bit older is that you can say, yeah, this is maybe not whatever path I've been supposed to have been on is actually not the path for me. And I need to do what is true for me. So what was there some specific event or some point where you just said, I no." It was something that pushed you over the, 
the you know yeah, the uh, decision? Yeah, uh, my last relationship uh, had ended badly, and um, I was just. And before actually, before I started that last relationship, I, I was actually considering transitioning then, but um, I decided to hold off because this came about, and okay, so we made this thing work for about five and a half years, and it just ended really bad. So I says, you know what, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I gotta do something now. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't, I can't wait any longer to try something over again. And how long ago was that? Uh, I have been out for almost four years, full time, living full time as as Amber. Okay, and uh, so and living living as Amber, and how does it how does it feel to embrace your Amberness and and all that that means? You know, uh, minus all the the anxiety and, and and emotions that were flowing through me with what could happen all, or what people could say, uh, you know, I just I love life. A lot more. I am comfortable in my own skin today. You know, I'm I'm able to. I, I you know what happened was I was out with a girlfriend and we were we were doing some shopping and I just came out of the store and I felt this sense of release. All my inhibitions to what people thought or people were going to say didn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And I said, this, this is it. This is this is where I move forward. Because it just took probably an enormous amount of energy to suppress and to hold back and to deny, uh, you know, who you truly were. As, oh yeah. And then when we, when you release that, yeah, you might, you have the fear there too. But it was easier. One thing became easier than the other. Right. So you're now out, and I want to make sure that bef while we're while we're talking early on that we get out your Facebook page. Um, what is your Facebook page so people can go there for resources or to contact you uh, just for a kind well, of Well, I've, I've had uh, uh, I started a blog, <coughs> <coughs> and it's just transgender information, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just kind of write about what the feelings that I'm having or have had in the past. And w what people that are looking for information can do, and where they need to go to help them achieve their journey more, mm -hmm. you know, but kind of dealing with life, you know, and and it ranges from from what what I've gone through to what the political stance is today, mm -hmm. and it's just a way to get information out there to to help educate the public as well as to help people that are transi transitioning or even anybody in the LGBTQ community that is kind of going through this thing. And so it's called transgender issues, but where would... Where transgender would, information. Transgender information, where would one go to find that? Is it if they Google Amber Larson transgender information uh, or is it a Facebook page? Or? It is a Facebook page. Of, I have it written down on that paper. There. Okay. I, yeah, oh, okay. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't have the, the, it, the address... Oh, we got it here. Then, it's yeah. uh, Amber Z as in zebra seven two six eight nine seven. Right. Okay. So probably, but if they go to Facebook and put in yeah, Amber. there's a Facebook address there too. You just type right in, and it will go directly to that. Page. Actually, you can put it on any browser. Yep. And it'll go straight there. Transgender it's, information. Uh, uh, face, Amber transgender Facebook, information. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Twitter, and then, yeah. and it'll show up. Yeah. Yep. Just like every Google. Does and it has my blogs. picture there, so I mean, it's easily identified. There's other okay. there's other blogs on there with transgender information, okay. but. Not a Mine's at the cat. top of the list. Okay, you're at the top of the list, so you're, so you're <laughs> ranked number one in Google. E there, there you go. Easy enough. So, uh, did you do all the transitioning here in Hawaii? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. And yeah. is, how is that legally transitioning? Was it difficult in Hawaii, or was it easy? Actually, uh, to transition here in Hawaii was relatively easy. Uh, they're more of a liberal state, so it was easier to um, get with a therapist and, and get the documentation, the letters and stuff to to change my uh, gender identity and, and stuff on my driver's license uh, and also on my uh, passport. Unfortunately, um, I was born in the state of Wisconsin and they're a little bit more scrutinizing uh, when trying to change your birth certificate. But here in Hawaii, it could all be done all at once before you even have the surgery or anything. And no need for surgery. Right. Yeah, because I think, uh, I've seen that some states now uh, are moving towards, or, and localities are moving towards n neither male nor female, which is completely different as well. Correct. And so we're looking at this gender uh, spectrum, and especially with young people, 
where they may not be identifying with either gender, which is also interesting and sort of something new, whereas you talked about we didn't have the idea really deeply of transgender in the 50s and 60s. There were a few examples like Renee, um, was it Renee Richards or, um, but that was like early 70s yeah. or the, in Denmark, um, oh, who was that in Denmark? In the, you know, in the 50s. But, it was extremely rare, and we didn't really, it wasn't in the consciousness like it is today. Exactly. Where it's front and center, our president is, is you know, going from, uh, he's going to be the most pro-LGBTQ <laughs> president ever, to uh, how many things has he done against the community, uh, from, yeah. you know, saying you can't serve in the military, which the military said, well, we're going to think about that one, because actually we value uh, transgender people just as much as we value everybody else because they bring something to the table just like everyone else. Exactly. So you're bringing your full humanity to who you are and what you do. How was it at work when you transitioned or did you change work or um, you know, how no, was that? I, uh, I actually uh, I, I met with uh, my board of directors and, and, and spoke with them and, and let them know and they were very open and, and uh, said just kind of you know take it at your pace and uh, I just, I just, one day and boom, uh, here I am. This is Amber. Mm -hmm. uh, I had dotted my eyes across my teeth before all that. You know, got the name change, got the gender change information. So you know, for payroll and record keeping purposes. Yeah. Um, so, but it went really well. It went really well. It, it surprised me how well it went actually. And what? support did you find along the way to help you with this? You mentioned that there's therapists involved. What is the role of therapists? What is the role of doctors in all of this? Is it, necess is it required? Is it necessary? Do you recommend it? All of the above. Oh, yes, most definitely. I mean, the first thing you want to do is, is reach out to your primary care physician and speak with them. Um, and depending on what type of HMO you have or something like that, there's actually some that have uh, doctors or clinics within themselves that deal with transgender uh, people and have more knowledge of it, especially in today's world. And so that's what I did and started on the, the uh, regimen of the hormones and that sort of thing. But to actually get into it, you do have to see a therapist. You do have to uh, talk with them because there are a lot of emotions. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster to just transition or even to live the life. Mm -hmm. So you need to be uh, taking hormones and living externally as the gender you're transitioning into for, is it a year before you can have any a gender confirmation surgery or? Uh, they, they, do ask for, they do ask for a minimum of one year um, and then, you know, they, they take it from there. The process to get this, the, the uh, gender reassignment surgery is a lengthy one. Mm -hmm. um, it takes time. You have to go through and get like prerequisites done, like for school. You know, there's you know there's electrolysis that need to be done. Mm -hmm. There's uh, preliminary doctor's appointments, uh, so to make sure that you're medically uh, that your heart's okay. Yeah, everything's okay for that. Uh, consultations that you have to go with, and then you know then they give you a date that says okay, this is when you if everything checks out, you'll have the surgery then. And I think it's important to note that, that not all people who, who transition choose to do any, um, any surgeries at all. They, oh, yes, it's an individual thing. Yeah, they, they may say, I'm, I'm satisfied with the outside and the way that I'm presenting, however that is, and that, that that's good enough for me. Yes, and, yes, definitely. And we have to respect each person's decision on that and, and how they go about that. And I think that's something that maybe people don't always understand. Uh, gender identity versus uh, sexual orientation. And what's your take on gender identity versus sexual orientation if you were to make it quick and easy for people? Well, you know, it, it, it is two separate issues. It just your gender identity is what you, what you, what's in your mind, what you, what you relate as, what you, who you feel you are. Mm -hmm. um, your sexual orientation, that's what you like to do in the bedroom, you know, and, what, and with whom, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's, it's, it's really not that complicated, though a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of people confuse those two issues. Yeah, yes. but so so gender, uh, gender identity is maybe who you go to bed as and sexual orientation or, or is what you do maybe in bed. Um, Correct. Or, yeah. so, or something along those lines. But I think these days is kind of a free-for-all anyway. But it's, it's mostly, I think, what the, the point about our, you want to make is especially is that gender identity is who you feel on the inside of 
of, right, of right. A, of, and, and in this case, like I said, we've got young people that are agendered or non-gendered or in the gender spectrum, but uh, your gender that you've chosen and you've decided and said, no, I'm a woman and that's it. And you felt this since you were five years old. I did, yeah. yes. Okay, and when we get back uh, from our break, I want to explore that, how your parents dealt with that and, and, or, or not dealt with that, and, um, it, and maybe your siblings or um, you know, friends along the way, and then what's happened since then. Um, and, and we'll go and continue this conversation after we get back from a break. So, great. Um, it is my great pleasure to be talking with Amber Larson, a transgender uh, advocate and uh, person on the journey, and uh, sharing uh, her personal story with us about um, becoming transgendered in this modern world. So I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on Think Tech live streaming network series where you are always going to be learning a lot of interesting stuff with great people. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation, and we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, we're back, we're live. I'm Winston Welton. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series, talking with Amber Larson on transgender issues and her journey. Thank you again for being here, Amber. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. So we were talking just before the break about that you'd always felt like this as a kid, or maybe sometime around five or six. Yeah, you know, like I say, it just I became aware of these feelings. And it, it, what, what was there, inside me wasn't matching what was outside me. I didn't know why I was feeling the way I was feeling and all that, and it, I didn't have the support to ask the questions either. So it was, it was a, a very much an internal struggle. And how did that manifest itself? Were, did you tell your parents, I'm a girl, I'm not a boy, or was it more physical, like they're wanting to play with dolls or, or clothing? Well, or? I d I like to I like to lean towards playing with the girls more and do the play house and play dolls and that sort of thing. And you know, my parents were like, "No, you don't do that." Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the girls back then they didn't want to play with boys, so it was like you know they they would shoo me away and just mm -hmm. leave the girls alone. Mm -hmm. um, I w I had a couple of sisters, and you know, I get caught periodically with some of their clothing. Instead of asking me why I had their clothing, my parents would just say, give it back. That was it. That was it. They didn't want to know. They put their head in the sand over it, you know, so to speak. And um, so I really never felt the connection to be able to tell them until I was way much older. And how did they take it when you did tell them? Well, my father had already passed by the time I had, uh, came out. And I told my mother, and she, was, she still had the same mentality. She didn't want to know. Mm. Uh, she, you know, but I, I had to explain to her that, uh, you know, this is who I am, this is who I'm going to be, and if you want me part of your life, then, you know, you're going to have to accept it. And she did, and she did, and it, it was, uh, she really, she really took it and, and reached out to me, and we got close with it. That's a really, um, it got to be a hard journey for a parent, you know, uh, I know even just with kids that change their names, it's hard enough because it's kind of the parents think, oh, uh, but I chose that name for you, you know, and for, for changing gender, you know, I mean, that, that first question that pops out, is it a boy or a girl, and then everything that goes along with that, when in fact these days we have a lot of intersex kids or boys and girls that don't really identify with either gender, and so when your child grows up and has been in a one gender and then says, that's really not who I am. It's got to be 
a real kind of psychological whiplash for the parents. So how long was it until your mom said, called you up and said, Amber, honey, I love you just the way you are? Uh, from the time I told her to, it was probably about three weeks, you know. Oh, fast. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Uh, she, she was out here, and so we, we were together and stuff. And I, I, at the time, and I don't know it, if it mattered, but I was her means of support out here because my none of my other siblings were here. My father had passed away, so I was her kind of her caregiver and, and, and helper. And whatever she needed done, I got it done for her. Mm -hmm. So did she lose it more as uh, gaining a daughter than losing a son? I think she did. Mm -hmm. I think she did towards the end. She really, like I say, she really embraced it. Um, and I think she was a bit apprehensive to be seen with me for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, uh, you know, we live in such a small island, uh, when we met up, with some of her church friends and stuff yeah. like that, it you know, it just it just rolled on. What percentage of you in your core is the same, uh, despite like what percent of you, if you were to guess, like okay, the there was this part of me from before, from ten years ago, and today that hasn't changed, but the the other part, the the trappings or the feelings or the outside, if you could give it a percent, I don't I, know. I mean, if I were to give it a percent, I would say probably fifty percent. Okay. Because, you know, my likes, my dislikes, the things that I uh, I do really haven't changed. Okay, so if you liked, you know, uh, Friends, the episode, then you still liked Friends afterwards. Yeah. But other well, things... I'm an auto enthusiast. I, I, I like cars, okay. uh, you know, and, and I grew up and I, I liked to fix cars back then. Now I like to flip them. Okay, flipping cars. And I was saying, like, <laughs> when you came in and said... It's so nice to be a woman. You have so many more choices in how, what you can do with your hair and your makeup and your clothes and your jewelry and you know painting your nails. And it's kind of boring to be a man in many, many ways, just from that, that external point of view. Although, sorry, folks, I'm still going to keep my long hair for a while. But you never know. I might surprise you. Um, how did that work in the opposite way? So you were a parent yes, and a spouse, um, and then... You had to come out to those folks. How did that work? Well, uh, the spouse didn't take it so well. Yeah. Uh, though she did know before uh, we even got really serious. Mm -hmm. um, she just didn't know that there was going to be a transition. Mm -hmm. um, as far as my, my child, uh, I have two, an older one and a younger one. Uh, the younger one is very accepting. Um, the older one doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doesn't really. It doesn't have an opinion on it. And I think that's probably the case with a, a millennial these days. So, you know, it's like, oh, you know, my parents are weird anyway. They got to do this, and so they're doing their own thing, right? It could be right. whatever that weirdness is. You know, uh, they like bowling. You know, and so in this case, it's you know, my dad became my uh, probably still my dad. I'm just guessing. Yeah, my younger son, he's, he's five, and uh, he still calls me daddy. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I didn't want to try to change that with him. Mm -hmm. You know. And I, I don't take offense over it. And you didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so support services, do you currently, um, are you a member of any groups that uh, where you can share your support? I know like the Lavender Center and Clinic, um, we had uh, Dr. Hawk and Dr. Rumler on a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe a month ago, and they have a wonderful um, healthcare uh, uh, provider system that that meets the whole spectrum of, of people from if you need you know vaccine to a blood draw to osteopathic manipulation to you know um, just regular um, you know primary care physician along with uh, mental and social uh, services so they have great talk talk shops um, that are all free for the community which is right. Amazing and, and a great shout out for the Lavender Center and Clinic. Do you participate in something like that or give your wisdom beyond your blog in those types of things? I do. Uh, I, I'm a big advocate of the Lavender Center and Clinic. Um, when I first transitioned, that's where I went mm -hmm. because there wasn't a whole lot of resources um, available for somebody like myself trying to transition. Uh, and I looked, you know. Yeah. Uh, they they were open and, and it, it really helped me a lot to go there and I was able to get the necessary resources and stuff like that uh, to to be able to start my transition and get the information needed and mainly uh, not from any of the working professionals there as much as the um, 
groups and the other transgender individuals yeah, at different just stages of their journey. Knowing that you're not, you're not alone and there's other people out there that support you or that are even like you. They're on yes. the same uh, or a similar journey because no, none of us are on the same journey, but on a similar journey. It, it was amazing. I mean, I didn't know how big the uh, community for transgender people is on this island until I got involved. With them. And do you think that, that it's bigger here than it is in the mainland or more accepting because of the host culture and, uh, you know, a traditional idea of a, of a mahukane or mahuahine? Or, and I do agree. I, I think it is definitely more accepting over here. Uh, we are kind of a melting pot uh, in itself, just being with the different cultures and, and everything that Hawaii is. So, you know, and transgender community, you don't, I don't get a lot of uh, negativity here from yeah. anybody. That's really awesome to hear. And yeah. that we're, I think, I like to think we're a little bit, a little more aloha and aloha land here. Um, but I suppose that, you know, you, we all have our detractors and no one's going to love us 100%, no matter, you know, who we are. And uh, that's okay. Yeah. Because we're okay with ourselves. And that's the main thing is just... So it's fundamental, I, I think of it as you know, self-love, deep self-love, deep self-care, um, what's it, extreme self-care. And when we, when we take that to heart, we can share it with other people because we're saying, yeah, I'm doing what's right for me. And you become a role model to the rest of the community. And I think you've done that. You were in the, you were in the Pride Parade this year. So tell us about that. Uh, what, was your, what was your role in the Pride Parade this year? Well, in the Pride Parade, I was Miss Gay uh, Pride Hawaii. Miss Gay Pride. Pride Hawaii, M-I-S-S. -S. Yes. yes. Okay, and what, does, what is Miss Gay Pride Hawaii? Well, it, basically it's, it's a organization, a triple M organization, Mr., Ms., and Miss Gay Pride Hawaii. And what they do is they, they, uh, they have this sort of contest where you reach out to the community and such and try to raise money for different organizations uh, so that you can you know, help them because everybody's underfunded these days with the government cuts and everything else that goes along with it. So this year it was the Gregory House mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're big advocates of the uh, people with HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. um, and they provide services for housing and hospice services, food baskets and, and that stuff and support services for them and their families. So it was a great way to raise money for that right. specific cause and Gregory House is an, a fantastic organization. And I think we should stress here that, you know, it's not, it's not an easy journey for people to make. Life isn't an easy journey, and we have so many trans kids that are, you know, saying, I don't think I want to stick around this planet. But they don't need to think that. There are resources available. There's, um, you know, even if you're feeling, like, really negative or even suicidal or a hotline, uh, they can call at 877-565-8860 or just Google it, you know? Say, exactly. I, I'm not... I, and I think what's happening is sometimes societal hatred is coming on per people individually and it's just too, too overwhelming for them on top of everything else. So if they need help, I, if people by all means should reach out to whatever it is. They can also reach out to the services here locally, like at the Lavender Center and Clinic, or they can look on your blog by just Googling Amber's blog on transgender issues in Mm -hmm. um, in Google, and they'll, you'll pop up with your face. It won't be a cat or um, <laughs> something like on mine. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, by you being you, by you being authentically you, it helps all of us, transgender, gay, straight, old, young, black, white, just to say, I'm a valuable human being. I need to authentically be myself so I can share my gifts with the world. And by your act of bravery and um, example, I just want to applaud you uh, for that. And also then stepping up to the plate and sharing your journey with other people because um, the lives that you'll touch today by this um, short interview that just says, wow, Amber seems totally cool. And if I could be as cool as Ram Amber in, in the, you know, uh, it, and I'm on board. So, right. yeah, I, anyway, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you. And I hope that you'll come back again and we can explore these topics more deeply because we were just able to scratch the surface. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. there's so much more. I mean, if I had to say one thing to, to the people out there looking or going through this is, is just be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Be real and, you know, be yourself. I don't hide from anybody. I, you know, I wanted to be stealth when I first started, but 
I, I don't hide I don't hide the fact that I'm transgender and mm -hmm. I just I, I need to help people so be your be yourself be yourself yeah yeah and uh, be grateful that you have an opportunity to be yourself exactly. it's a wonderful life and make it as wonderful as we can so uh, it's a obviously fantastic message from a fantastic human being who's here to help us along our journey and you don't need to be transgender to listen to all this message and take it to heart so Sadly, we are out of time and we have to wrap it up again during this Thanksgiving week. I am very grateful that I have had Amber Larson, our transgender advocate, on our show. I will be here in a couple weeks. This is Winston Welch on Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. So thanks so much for joining us today. We welcome your topics. Remember, if you need to reach out for support, do so. We thank Amber deeply for sharing her personal story with us and look forward to much more in the future. Um, thanks to our broadcast engineer, the amazing Robert McLean and his awesome graphics, our floor manager, El Eric Calander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. I'll see you here in a little bit, uh, a couple weeks for more of Out and About on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha and happy Thanksgiving, everyone.